Hello and welcome to another episode of the Spotlight Games Podcast. My name is Patrick. I'm your host. Today we're going to be talking about God of War Ragnarok and the Game Awards. All the announcements have come out of what's being nominated. So we're going to talk about it. We're going to predict. We're going to do all those things. And we're going to do all those things with my sweet dumpster boy, Cam and Darty, my co-host, my good pal that has a hurt booty, mm. Cayman. Cayman, I, I, I want to ask you how you are, but I know you're in pain. I'm going to respond like Kratos does the entirety of God of War Ragnarok and just go. <laughs> <laughs> the whole episode, wow. that's just going to be me. Good. <clears throat> I love it. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to talk about God of War, Cayman. Uh, how how are things in your world outside of you know your butt? Um, do you yeah, want to tell the listeners at home what's happening to your butt? Oh uh, yeah, that's probably good. Context is key here. I spanked um, so, you too hard. Yeah, I got spanked too hard. I have a herniated disc that apparently affects your coccyx uh, nerves and your sciatic nerves. And so it is incredibly painful for me to be sitting, but I love each and every one of you so much that I will suffer through sitting just to make this podcast happen. He's doing it for the folks at home. He's doing it for the pod. All of you that are there right now. All three of you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, let's do some housekeeping. Let's jump into the show. Uh, We have a lot of video game stuff to talk about because this is the Spotlight Games podcast where each week we spotlight the latest and the greatest in the world of video games. You can get it by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Spotlight Games Pod. Yes, YouTube does have handles now, so you can just search for our handle in YouTube and you'll find us. You can subscribe there or by searching for Spotlight Games in your favorite podcast app. And hey, you can be on the show by tuning in as we record live, as we are right now, Tuesdays at 8 o'clock Eastern on twitch.tv slash Spotlight Games Pod. So be sure to follow us there so you know when we go live so you can be part of the conversation. Cayman, we have another episode. I mean, it's Tuesday, mm-hmm. as I just mentioned. We have another episode of Save Trash Cinema because all episodes of Save Trash Cinema come out every Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Tell the folks at home, those sweet, sweet people in the chat, What's going on in the world of trash cinema this week? Well, let me tell you, Patrick. We had the luxury of having on Bobby Menendez, um, who is one of our trash crusaders who follows us. He had a recommendation and came on the show to save a film with us. The film is The Class of 1984. came out in 1982. Uh, it was directed by... It was directed by the guy who... or Sorry, it was written by the guy who wrote... Um, the child's play series, the Chucky Mm. films. He did a ton of the eighties Stephen King films. Um, It it is uh, the way I think the best way to, to explain it is in the eighties, Nancy Reagan had this thing called dare. Some of you might remember (laughs) dare. Yeah. And she said, drugs are bad. And let me tell you, Ev the throat goat hated drugs. And so she made sure that every film that came out that had drugs in it was awful. And this movie is literally an hour and 30 minutes of Nancy Reagan just punching a table being like, wow, drugs are make the drugs seem worse. Make the drugs seem worse. Teenagers are terrible. And let me tell you, it's a wild ride. So shout out to Bobby for being on that episode. He was an absolute delight. We actually had Boston Mike as our second chair. Gave Patrick another week off. Let him recuperate as well. Um, movies crazy. Episodes crazy. And uh, yeah, it's a good time. And it, guess what? The movie's on Tubi. So hey, hey we're Shut back up. at it. We, back we at really it. need to get someone from Tubi on the podcast. Yeah, we need to just just fucking sponsor us already. Yeah. We're providing you at least half of yeah. your viewers are coming straight from us. Steve Tubi, get your ass over here. Let's talk about good movies. old Steve Tubi. Old Steve Tubi. Cayman, I. I just I want to talk about some video games as as much as I'd love to talk more about Steve Tubi. So let's talk about what we've been playing. So we're going to talk a lot about God of War. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit, Mm -hmm. just a little bit Mm -hmm. about Mario plus Rabbids Mm. Sparks of Hope. I I've been playing this game on and on when I'm not playing Marvel Snap. Because I still just I'm still so addicted to that game. Dude, I've got Um, I've been infinited. uh, like yeah. four times now, absolutely yeah. soul crushing. There's like, there's an infinite craze going through the world of Marvel Snap at the moment. I today I've I've come across like three or four as well. Um, that that beefy boy, 
infinite. You know, you all because the way they play him too, like you always go for the snap because you're like, oh, this is in the bag. Yep. <laughs> this is in the fucking bag. Yep. Boy. And then they they don't play anything on turn five, and you know, oh, okay, well. Oh no. Let's see if I can outsmart them with this 20 point card. Um, but you yeah, know, I've been playing a lot of Mario Plus Rabbit Sparks of Hope and I really enjoyed the first game a lot. I played it well after the time it had come out. Um, so this one, it was one of my most anticipated games of this year, just because it's it's unlike most games that I play. And I think it's unlike the majority of video games that come out these days, mm-hmm. um, which is always fun to have something different. Sure. And so for those of you who don't know the game, it's uh, this fucking weird. It's, it's so weird. It's such a weird concept. Mm. Mario and the character of the Rabbids, which are these little rabbits that I don't even know how to describe them, honestly, uh, team up to go on these adventures together. But it's all done in a strategy like turn based game a la um, what's that? Fran- what's the big one? The big franchise that fires like love. Fire Emblem. It's like Fire Emblem. Um, and this one, they've made some changes. It's not, it is still like turn based, but it's not um, the map that you're playing in isn't as uh, gridded out. It's, it's much more of like a free flowing strategy sim, which is really interesting. It's like it, it still has a lot of walls around it and it still has a lot of structure, but it doesn't feel as, um, as square and as like blocky, if that makes sense in the way that the original game would move. Um, I'm having a really good time with it. I mean, the story is meaningless and it, sure. I mean, it's just, it's just play, um, but it's really pretty. They've, they've in, uh, introduced a ton of new characters, both that can be on your team and that you're fighting against. Um, so, I mean, if I feel like if you played the first game and you liked it, and you want more of it, you should play this game. If you didn't play the first game, but you're interested in trying this kind of a game, I would say you should get this game. If you play the first game and you didn't like it, or you know you're not going to like this kind of game, you're like, don't waste your time. You know, like there is nothing surprising about this game, which I think is both good and it's a little disappointing. Like I I was kind of hoping that this game would um, introduce something that would like spice it up a lot more um it's mostly just more of the same with like a few quality of life improvements um so i definitely don't think it's going to be like in the game of the year discussion by any means but Mm. i think it's i think it's worth people's money if they if they think they'll like it and um so yeah is this like are you do you think you'll play this game at some point cayman yeah no absolutely i really enjoyed uh the first game yeah so for me it was more like what do I have time to play at this moment? Yeah. And I opted. I there was a moment in time where I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna play Gotham Knights in the lead up, yeah, to uh, Mario or to God of War." And then the reviews dropped. And, not great. Uh, not fantastic. Yeah, not fantastic. So um, I get that. Then it was like. I only got like a week and a half. Fuck it. I'm so addicted to Marvel Snap. It's fine. It's <laughs> fine. That'll that'll hold me over until Ragnarok. And it really um, did. It really did. Now I'm like, I can't fucking put down Ragnarok. Yeah. Which shit. let's talk about that in just a second. That would have been a perfect segue. But there is a, a, a thing about the game that I meant to mention that I forgot. Something that I do really like that has changed is that you might remember from the first game. It was very, very linear. It was yeah. very much like just corridors. You're going through. Yeah, this it was place. almost like maps. Yeah, it really felt like maps. This game, it is more like small open world, which is Mm -hmm. cool in that when you're in these places, the maps are are still pretty small, but they're you can just run around the map and there's like little side quests and little things and little puzzles around. So like that is fun and that it does feel new in that way, but it almost feels like they didn't quite go for it. Mm. all the way yeah. if that makes sense like it, it feels different and it feels fresh but it still feels really contained um which maybe that 
ultimately serves the game better. Maybe it, if it were bigger, I wouldn't like it as much. Um, they probably tested it being bigger, but um, but yeah. So that is that is quite the change from the original game, and that it, it is it can be linear if you want it to be, but there's a lot of extra stuff to sure. do. Uh, I mean, it's all really easy, and it's all you know. There's nothing like super how is, challenging. How is the dick? Because that was one thing I re- distinctly remember from the first game was that there was like a pretty steep difficulty curve towards like the three quarter mark. So it's like, what the fuck? Like, why would you do this? This almost felt like artificial difficulty just to make yeah. the game like more padded out to like, which I, do, I don't appreciate. Like I would have yeah, preferred not if a, the game was just mm-hmm. what it was or if it felt more fair, but God damn. So like, do, do you not, do you feel like they're, they're going to pull that shit again? Or like, do you think you're I won't be surprised. Or- I won't be surprised yeah. if I, I'm not far enough in yet. I'm on world two and I don't know how many worlds there are. Um, but there have been like every now and then there's like one random battle where I'm like, what the fuck? Why is this? And I don't know if it's because I'm just, I'm, I haven't optimized my team enough or because each character has their own like pros and cons. So like maybe the people, cause I normally just roll with Mario, Luigi and peach. I don't really fuck with the rabbits very much. Sure. Um, and so maybe that's it. Maybe, maybe the, I'm picking the wrong people. It could be that. Mm. Um, every, but it's like one out of every 15 matches. I'm like, this is difficult. And I, I might like restart it and like heal first. Cause a lot of the time I don't heal because it costs coins to heal. So I'll be like, I can get through this, this battle at half health. And I'm like, okay, actually, no, I need a little bit more. So I'll sure. restart heal and then do it. But um, but yeah, I, I won't be surprised if I get to a point where I'm like, wow, this is really difficult all of a sudden, like the last yeah. game. But I will report back. But I probably am not going to report back in a minute because I am knee deep in God of War Ragnarok, much like I know you are. So came in. I mean, this is easily by far my most anticipated game for this year. Yeah. And I think it's probably safe to say it is for you too. Yeah. Uh, and I'm just so thrilled that we even got it this year, but I want to talk about it. Obviously this is going to all be completely spoiler free. We will be talking about mechanics. We will be talking about even, I can't even talk about most of the mechanics. Sure. Sure. But we'll definitely be, I mean, if you don't want to hear anything other than our high level thoughts, uh, which we both, I think we, I can speak for gaming in that. This yeah. It's fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. If you don't want any of that, then look at the time codes and skip ahead to the game of the year uh, or game awards discussion. But came in, I want to kick it to you because I've been talking for a while about Mario plus Rabbids. What do you think about God of War Ragnarok? So he, uh, here's my thing. And this little bit, like, you, you got to just bear with me a second. Okay. So I'm buckling in. God of War Ragnarok is just so much better than god of war 2018 yeah now that is not an indictment on god of war 2018 which is honestly one of the best games probably ever made that'll just goes to show like how good ragnarok is it so and here's the thing is I always how many hours like, in are you uh 23 at the okay. moment um so here's the thing and this is like i think very important to to kind of nail down is that like rolling off the heels of a game that's very good a lot of times you fall into the trappings where the game either doesn't hit the same highs or just feels too similar so when you have something and especially in a game that's that short of a time frame which is not like that short we have like four years between god of war 28 the 2018 god of war and this one so four years but if you look at something like the last of us that came out we had what almost 10 years between the two Mm -hmm. um getting that sort of leap between one and two obviously one we consider the greatest playstation game of all time two we consider to be like i think third (laughs) (laughs) it's up there it's definitely yeah so like it's incredible how that like works and that plays out this game from just like a technical standpoint, it and Cindy and I were having a conversation about this where we were like, is it more beautiful than Horizon Forbidden West? Which I think is the most beautiful, like is the best looking game on the PlayStation 5. Oh, sure. And I want to say yes. I think I agree. I'm only seven hours in, so I've not played nearly as much as you, but yeah, there's breathtaking. 
Yeah, there's moments in the game where I had like stopped and been like, this looks like a photo. Yeah. Like this looks like someone videotaped and then they just like superimposed characters over it. Like there's no way. Um, I do think that the sound design also is the best sound design of any game I've ever played. It's really um, good. It is absolutely incredible just hearing the way that they incorporate music, which I feel like is something that like is very underrated in games. You know, we always like we always remember like the, that moment, right, where you have like a really cool thing or a game has a really cool theme song. But there's just like little moments where you'll just hear like a pan flute in the background mm -hmm. and it's very serene. And it's just like this is unreal. Like I've never, you know, like just the way that they incorporate stuff like that. I think also the other thing that works really well here that I don't think we talk a lot about is like how simple everything is. You're not having interactions with 5,000 characters, but those characters you do have interactions with are so much more memorable and meaningful mm -hmm. because they're not overloading, which I think was an issue that Horizon Forbidden West had, which was you're meeting 150 unique characters throughout the game that by the time the game's over like i don't even really remember half of them what i do remember are these little intimate moments these little stories and how they like will dangle threads early in the game and how 20 hours later like that thread will come back yeah and there's little Easter eggs that they've kind of sprinkled in um, that are really funny about like Pat, like, well, there's, there's very emotional Easter eggs that they've thrown in about previous God of War games that are like, wow. Like, you know, like you have to be like a diehard God of War fan to catch sure. some of these references. I probably won't are, catch most of this. Yeah. Which are like for someone like me who really loves the series, like is really cool, but there are moments where they even make references to things like Mortal Kombat 11. Which is one of the funniest things in the world to me. Wow. That's Kratos, amazing. Like, this isn't really, a, this isn't a spoiler. It's just a little Easter egg that like, it just happens randomly while you're exploring the world. Mimir, he's like, so Kratos, why don't you tell us a story? We, I heard once that you were, you were part of a, a tournament where you fought the undead and pr a princess and a, pr and it like goes through and then he makes a reference to a prince. They're like, what the fuck is the prince? And then every like, then it dawns on you, you're like, oh my god, they're talking about Rain for Mortal Kombat, who's a reference to Princess Purple Rain, and he's like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> That's <laughs> hilarious. I've not gotten that yet. This is this is also like one of the most human versions of Kratos. Oh yeah, I can even tell that only being seven yeah. hours in. Like the, the the I mean the writing in this game is already like. Yeah. I haven't even hit a lot of the big story beats yet. And there's there's like literally two different moments in the opening hour that like had me on the verge of tears. Yeah. Yeah. Like the, and I just I, yeah, I I I don't want to like spoil what those moments are, but I'm just my biggest worry going into this game would be or was that this game would be would feel derivative, would feel mm. like the story wasn't going to pack as big of a punch because the story of the first game was just so beautifully done. And this story of like this father trying, who like doesn't really know how to love, learning how to show his love for his son and like protect him and all those things. And they go on this journey together. And I was just worried that this game was going to not be able to have that same punch and have that same story impact and even i mean only seven hours in and i can already tell like i will be shocked if if i don't think this game is like leagues above 2018 by the time i'm done with it unless they just yeah. really drop the ball by the end see that's and so what i've been seeing so i'm 23 hours in now keep in mind i've also been exploring every nook and cranny and yeah. any time that i have the ability to go back and explore i get some new whatever I go back to previous areas to find everything because I don't want this to end. Now, with that being said, I have seen that the story or that the game takes anywhere, but it's between 27 and I think it's 27 and 32 hours. Now, I don't know if that's golden pathing. I don't know if that's doing sure. literally 100% of everything. I don't even know what's possible to, if it's possible to do 100% of everything before you roll credits. Um, 
I don't like, here's what I'm worried about is I know how, like, I know what people are saying the time of it takes to beat the game is. And I'm getting close to that time. Mm. And I'm getting very worried that the game is either going to rush to a conclusion or it's going to end on a massive cliffhanger. I mean, I don't think it's going to end on a cliffhanger and I, I don't, I have no spoilers. Uh, thankfully I've not been spoiled on this. Yeah. Game. I haven't either. A lick. There was one thing that I kind of got spoiled, but I have, I've come to that moment. So I'm now mm-hmm. at a point in which nothing has been spoiled for me. And I, I mean, we know that they said this is only going to be two games. Yeah. This story. So I get, I mean, they could do a cliffhanger setting up like another set of stories, but I would think we'll, we'll get a good bit of closure on this game at least i hope if they don't I'm like what are you doing like I, you said this is a two game saga not more than that so yeah i don't know yeah and i think the other thing too is it's very important to point out that's like um it like it, in terms of this game like you have to play 2018's god of war before you play this game 100 percent, a there's thousand percent a, there's a lot of games where I'm like, like if you played Uncharted, I'd be like, yeah, you can really jump it whenever the fuck you want. Honestly, yeah. like it doesn't really matter. You don't, yeah. especially don't need to go back and play one unless you want to play one. Like you're obviously getting probably get a better impact. Like this game, a thousand percent, you have to play 2018's God of War before you play this game. There's it no really world is. in which you you can skip it. Or it's you're going to be so lost. A hundred percent. It's the same as Last of Us Part Two. This is God of War Part Two for sure. Yeah. Like. This is a continuation of the story, like to the nth degree. This is not just like another injury point in Kratos' story. For seventy dollars, you can be the god of war. Like it is, they are completing a story that they started four years ago. Uh, John in the chat, hey John, only seven hours in says the guy who doesn't have kids. Twenty three hours in says the guy who doesn't have kids. Says the uh, guy who's literally hasn't left his couch in like four days. Spoiler, Kratos crawls into Thanos' ass and explodes him. Or was that Ant-Man? John, how dare you come into our chat and spoil this game for me? I didn't know Thanos was in this game. There's actually, it's funny he says that. Obviously, he, he he's never played God of War 3, in which you go into Kronos' mouth and then explode out of his stomach. Oh, so uh, Love that. Um, I Another thing to, like, the performances in this game so far are stupid. Ryan Hurst, who is from Sons of Anarchy, plays a character who I, I don't think it's a spoiler to say this character because he's all over the the fucking oh, yeah. right. Yeah, no, we can yeah. 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 So he plays Thor, and he's incredible. Robert Schiff as Odin, uh, Toby from the uh, the West Wing, like, and I forget the actress's name who plays Freya from the last game. She's back, and like, man, I just the guy playing Mimir, obviously uh, from Save Trash Cinema from uh what movie was that that he was in Split second so let's second uh yeah and, and like obviously kratos and and atreus it's so funny like for judge is so fucking good. he's so good but it's so funny that the actor that plays a- a- atreus he is obviously going through puberty and they have like the character like he's also a teenager now and he just sounds so different because i just played 2018 last month and i was like wow is it you are a growing boy you're there's a, a there's actually man. a reference to that with one of the characters later in the game that they make a joke about the fact that his Good. voice has changed. Um, I think the big thing too is, and you might have started to get it where you are in the game, but like Sindri and Brock, the true dwar- the two dwarves that help you in the first game, obviously they reprise their roles as mm-hmm. kind of like pivotal characters in the story because they are in the first one too, so it's not a spoiler. But like their story is just as big. And I just... These- I just got to a point in which there was a revelation that was like, oh, interesting. So you're telling a story about them too. And I'm really excited. It's, about and that. what I think is so incredible about this game and like why I'm so high on it is like the way that they've done this compared to like pre- other games is like when you play something like The Last of Us, your character moments and your character growth is only happening between Joel and Ellie. And sure, you do have Abby in The Last of Us Part Two, where you see some character growth there as well. But like, it's really confined to just mainly two characters, three characters at most. Um, in this game, every character that comes on screen that has a name, even Mimir, the talking head at your side, has character growth. 
and there's character progression for all of these characters. And then they started throwing you curveballs in terms of gameplay mechanics with additional characters. And then the game opens up and there's a lot of like Metroidvania style backtracking because you have new things that you can do. Yeah, it is. It just it really takes everything from the first game and just makes it so much better. Yeah, um, it's this game is not just more god of war 2018 no not at all. it is that but there is so much more to this game already in only seven hours for me that i that alone i think is is a huge win and i'm i'm proud and thankful about uh, of uh sony santa monica that they nailed it because the i can't imagine the amount of pressure that that studio has been under the last four years after yeah. delivering what is a consensus like top five game of all time and to now be delivering what is likely another top five game of all time is, is pretty incredible. Um, I'm curious, is there anything for you that's not working so far? Um, whew, that's a good question. That I, would be spoiler free. Spoiler free. I think sometimes the combat can be a little wonky um, where I feel like I'm parrying at the, the right time, but the parry doesn't hit. But it, it, then again, I think that some of this too is that I'm just not very good at this or that I've played the entire game on pain pills. So like, <laughs> it could be that as well, that my reflexes are just not what they used to be or what sure. they should be. Um, yeah. But I think like if, if, I, if I did have any complaints, but I do feel like in this game in particular, compared to the first one is like, we have more boss fights or the way that they do boss fights is different where it doesn't feel like, Oh, it's a troll. Guess what? We're fighting a big troll. Now yeah. that was my biggest complaint with the first game. It, it was so rinse and repeat the first. Yeah. Game. And, and there's, there's so many different enemy types now and variations of different enemies that you have to change up the way that you play. There's way more of an emphasis on the parry system, which mm -hmm. plays really well. There's way more emphasis on using um, Atreus in combat, which I think yeah. is really cool. Uh, where it I really also... wasn't the lot. Like, he would just help you from the side, but, like, he's yeah. a pivotal, like, you have to use him. Yeah, if you don't use him, you are in trouble. And, like, this, it, it they are doubling down and making this a much more defensive game. Like, yeah. at least for me, I started the game on hard, and I was like, I got to the first like mini boss fight. And I was like, uh, this, I'll do hard on my new game plus playthrough, but I'm surprised that like they've introduced some new enemy mechanics that really ramp up the stakes when you're in combat, uh, which is really cool. Um, like there's this new uh, thing that a, an enemy can do that essentially like, if they hit you in a way, if they hit you again, it's going to do like double damage and that's a really cool new mechanic yeah, the that frost uh-huh that like really makes it to where because the game like the original game or 2018 the combat especially as you start leveling 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 up excuse me could really start to feel rote mm -hmm. and i can already see the the ways in which they are building the game to make that not be a problem and like even more so than just enemy variety like they've they've kind of updated combat in multiple ways that I think is really cool. Um, for me, the, the only kind of thing that I'm not vibing with so far is you had texted me and you were like, I'm afraid of upgrading a piece of armor mm, because yeah. I don't want to like uh, corner myself into to doing this. And I responded, I was like, you remember in the last game, like we had so many resources and so much hacks over that like it wasn't a problem. While that might end up being the case by the end of the game, I see what you mean. Like, you really don't get a lot of resources in this game. And mm -hmm. I do feel like I'm having to choose which, like, really early, which armor to upgrade. Or else, like, I'm... And, and maybe that has changed by the, by the point you're in. It's much... It's been a, yeah, it's, it's much, much more... Like, I have so much... I have, a, like, a million hacks over it. Okay, before. great. Great. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just, I haven't reached that point yet. In which, yeah. Okay. It, so I basically, the, yeah. and then you, the thing is what they do to kind of offset that is that you can pick up armor later in the game that starts off at like level five instead of level. Ah, uh, okay. So you're, you're, you can kind of switch over to that, but then they've got like these really cool mechanics that are inlaid with like your armor types where like your armor can essentially have like, you can have like certain like boons or buffs so you so to speak if you have matching like 
you can be like, okay, well, I have corresponding chest piece and corresponding waist piece. And if I have those two items equipped, then I can switch out my bracers to something else entirely. But those two pieces will give me like, and it, it gives me a buff where I have like 15% chance that in combat, if I on like 50% chance on hit, that it causes like a miniature explosion. Mm, like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it does kind of, but at the same time, like while you do that, once you hit level five, your armor immediately to upgrade it are like very rare resources. So it kind of puts you back in the same place place where you're like do i use this or do i hold or like what do i do because i know that there's like special armor probably towards the end of the game and like maybe that's better i don't know so in terms of that but i'm also like i have like so much like so many resources that i didn't have at the beginning of the game that i now have like i have like 400 hardened leather so oh, I can wow. literally okay. uh, I can literally upgrade like all of my pieces that were like level one now to like level three without okay. even like sweating. Um, That's good to know. Yeah. So it does it. So I've been less worried about that. And I've yeah. been picking up some better pieces that like cool. more. So they do kind of give you for the people who want to be like, like if, if you want to burn your resources earlier on to get an upper hand in combat, like you can. That's good. Um, and I've also I've heard if you max out a piece of armor, you can. um that's when it unlocks uh oh man what is it called when you can change the way it looks but have oh, the same stats yeah transmog transmog yeah and they've because they didn't have transmog in the last game and that i remember being a problem for me because i just i don't love the full armored kratos look i like being able to see some skin see some just shoulder us yeah yeah and uh and so but there were ones where i was like no i really like this other armor piece though uh so yeah, my so, yeah, Kratos that... currently looks like a goddamn battle tank. Yeah, good. <laughs> Just, good. But I agree um, with you. Like, I'm not a big fan of him looking like a battle tank, but also yeah. the perks that come along with that particular it, armor yeah. piece is like really good for it. And that's the thing is, is like it's good for the style and also the shields now because you have multiple different yeah. variations of shields. And you can pretty much pick a shield where it's like I found out like it's during a certain boss fight. I was like. I'm really struggling getting my parries down. So I switched to a shield that you don't parry. You can just mm. absorb that attack without getting like knocked off. Like you don't get stunned if you miss the parry. Is it the you tall just, one? Yeah. And so cool. I was like, fuck it. So I just switched over to that for this boss fight. Cause I like really was struggling getting the parry down and was able to like just breeze. Nice. And then I switched back and was like getting back. Cause you know, some enemies are way easier to parry. There's some mechanics involving the shields. That I can't tell you about. Sure. They're really cool. cool. The game's like the game's fucking awesome. And I, I'm very curious to see how this ends up playing out in the game of the year. Okay. Conversation because, uh, we have two juggernauts, Patrick. You're a consummate professional came in. What a segue. What a segue. Uh, yeah, I want to talk about, so 